Yes. What's that? No flags, so we're not pledging allegiance. Mm -hmm. I think it's in a preliminary sense that I went to do Is it really? Yeah. You ought to put a flag in board docs and we can salute it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for my Please. teleprompter. Right. Right, uh, Hood Pond Agreement. So this is the situation, as I understand it. We were, I don't think there's any substantive difference here, but we were trying to make sure we had the insurance provision correct. Mm -hmm. And we have clarified that um, they, have, they were added and continue to be an additional insurer under the town general liability policy. Mm -hmm. There's two more questions. One is, do we know if they're in the workers' comp policy? They wouldn't be. They're not employees of the town, so they wouldn't what be on our policy. They're employees? They're not on our policy, no. They're not, okay. They would so, qualify. So, so the... Two seconds to get this. So, the um, Article 3 insurance that stands before us, or sits before us at the moment, says the licensee, <coughs> so that's them, so first off, that needs to be changed to licensor. That's the town, right? Shall maintain general liability coverage in an amount acceptable to the town. So, so that's the first change that would have to be made. Well, I think it's, I thought it was two. I thought both of us. We have an umbrella policy, but I, I was under the impression that they also had a base policy. Yeah, yeah. Right, that comes to the third okay. prong or the third uh, segment. So, so that's the first that would need to be changed to licensure. And then it has to be a period and Some of the, I'm going to skip the workers' comp for a second, it's, but this, the wording has to be changed to make it clear that they're not under the town's workers' comp. The licensee. And the last sentence now says, any and all other insurance related to the management and operation of the premises is the responsibility of the licensee. So that's it. So we need to delete, one way to do it would be to delete the workers' comp clause. Then it falls under the third one by that specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at the risk of redundancy, if we move forward, the motion should uh, amend Article 3 insurance to say the licensor at the beginning to delete the words in workers' compensation insurance as may be reasonably requested as required to protect the licensee from claims under GL Chapter 152 of the workers' compensation law. Those are the technicalities. We have at least two ways to go. Um, the Hood put, put on folks not able to attend. Um, but you know, I don't believe there's any conversation that's necessary. So we can either put this not act and put this again back when we did her, or we can, or I can entertain a motion um, to approve the agreement with the state of change of the nature. Okay. The Hood Pond folks been told that they are responsible for workman's yeah. comp? No, because we found out. Yeah, so, yeah. so I would suggest we postpone it so that we can yeah. alert them rather than have them come back and say, whoa, 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 this is not going to work. Have we ever seen they their insurance that. policy? Yeah, they, they, they know they have. They have two kinds of insurance. They have the workers' comp and they have the director's insurance. But this, so, this says we're covering the workers' comp. Now, right now it well, says they are. Now it says they are. Right. We change it to or and we take it out, then, yeah. then we're but okay. But your understanding is they are. They have that and they're aware of that. That's what you said. That's the right, that's the way I understood it, yes, from what they said. Then we'd still have to break that into two sentences. So yeah, that's showing I, that I, we I, have to do it. Yeah, the wording works, that's a question. Of the I just don't we want wait. any surprise about them being responsible for the work that's come. We can wait, obviously. We'll put this on the 20th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Oh, it's not a time, it's not a time sensitive issue. No. Well, it, it is in the sense that, not really, but there's not a lot of swimming going on now. But I think, the, I think it officially ends at the end of December. Mm -hmm. And we like to have them responsible for that whole place. 
pay somebody call or there's some issues or whatever else. They're responsible for it. But no, there's nothing critical because there's no swimming. So why don't we just postpone it to the next yeah, meeting, the take that sentence out so that the document we will have before yeah. us will be... Is correct, the licensee is yeah. already correct. Yeah. And copy. someone follow up with them to yeah, make sure, sure. They, right. they, 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 they should get a copy of the modified yes. agreement yeah. tomorrow. We, you know what it is. Let's get it to them and explain what has changed and say, is this okay? Yep. I, I That's would right. also use this opportunity to ask them just for... Um, copies, proof of insurance. Yep. Just so I, think we'll I think it's a great idea. Right. It's a great idea. With that in hand, it would, I think, be a no-brainer, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, item number two, um, we have a problem with an existing ambulance. And the fire chief is here to let us know what's going on. I didn't know you were behind me. It's fine. Um, thank you. I bring the body mount for engine for E2, which we found on the ground a few weeks ago. Um, so just as just as a, um, let's see, just a little history. A2 is um, back up to a backup ambulance, so it's the backup to our A1, which is the backup to Northeast Regional Ambulance. Um, it was purchased on September. It was given to the town on September 18th of 2006. The um, Topsail Firefighters Relief Association purchased it and donated it to the town. It served us well for 12 years. Like I said, it's the backup for um, our ambulance and uh, when Northeast is not available. And it's used if um, there are several patients, so we need to transport more than two or three patients. Um, it's, as you know, the replacement of that vehicle is actually on the capital plan for FY20, so that's the beginning conversations we're having about that. Um, it's unfortunate that it just couldn't last that long. So we found that um, actually um, probably like um, nine months ago, we found another piece that was similar to that that was a um, cab mount that we had repaired at New Meadows Auto. When we found that, I actually had it towed to New Meadows Auto and they repaired it. When we found that on the ground, I spoke to New Meadows Auto, they said bring it down, we'll look at it. They said body mount way beyond us, go to Salem Break and Clutch. Took it there, they said we won't touch it. So I went to Greenwood who is our, um, that's who we bought our, previously we bought our fire uh, engines from and things like that. And um, they looked at, their mechanic looked at it and said it's all rotted underneath um, the brake lines, the body mounts, and there's no guarantee that that box on the back of the ambulance won't come off. So he said it, it, would be, it should be condemned, it shouldn't be used. So I have taken it out of service. It's not been used since that. Um, so it's in the station. Um, so um, you, ha you have my, do you have my memo? So you can see all the things that were wrong with it and were repaired with it. So right now, um, we um, we're, we don't have a backup to the ambulance. So how does that affect us? We um, transport we've transported each day this week to the hospital with a patient for one reason or the other, whether it be mutual aid to another community, someone from our community um, in Northeast wasn't available or whatever. Every time that we do that, now the town is without an ambulance. When last week when A1 had its regular annual um, inspection for um, you know your annual your 12 year 12 month inspection sticker. It was out of service, we didn't have another vehicle for it. So it's important to have that vehicle as a backup and also um, to take if we have more than one patient that's injured or more than two patients that's injured. Um, so it's important to have that. I went to, um, because a lot of times some departments do have extra vehicles that they could loan. So I went to Gloucester Fire, I went to Linfield Fire because they have, um, they have ambulances. The um, truth of the matter is they have ambulances that are way bigger bigger than what we can fit in our station. Um, so then I, I, I called Greenwood again and asked them, because people turn in their ambulances when they buy new ambulances. So I went down and looked at a couple of ambulances they had. Um, this one that they're offering to let us use is from West Boylston. West Boylston um, turned it in when they got a new ambulance. I spoke to the chief in West Boylston. He said he just replaced the fuel injectors in it, that it um, has a small oil leak, but other than that, it's been maintained and it's as sound as he knows. We know it's all kind of a um, toss-up. But anyway, so um, Greenwood has been a great partner to the town of Tossfield. We bought our last two fire engines from them and um, other vehicles throughout time, and um, we have a really good relationship with them, and they were happy to help us during this time. So. Um, they offered us uh, either that there was an air fire truck uh, engine, which is I mean um, air ambulance, which was 
even older. Um, you mean A Y E R? I do. I know. Yeah, yeah. A Y yeah A Y. And which also I spoke to that chief, and he said it was also um, it was mechanically sound too. But um, so he um, Greenwood has offered to um, sell us because that's what they have to do in order to be able to get it um, registered and insured. Um, that ambulance, because uh, frankly it sits on their lot and does nothing for anyone um, on their lot because there's not a lot of uh, market for used ambulances like this. So um, it's an opportunity to, um, I would have that, our current A2 deemed surplus at some point because um, its value is in the engine. It has a really good engine as I'm told. So that somebody might desire that to put in one of their trucks um, down the road. But so the, the goal would be to um, um, declare that surplus and then fill in with this A2 from West Boylston from Greenwood until we go through the process of the, um, our, our fiscal year 20 process. Is that where the 240 days comes from? Yes, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't, I, they had originally put 120 days and I asked them if they could extend it because it's just a bad timing. It's really bad timing. So that's why I put those days on. I have a question for you too, but I think you've answered it and I think I've answered it for myself. Uh, you said that you bought a couple of trucks from Greenwood. Yes. So I, the question was, how well do you know Greenwood? And you know them well, obviously. Yeah, yeah we've bought, we bought the, um, the Pierce's, now, Engine 2 and Engine 3. From and a, another question, uh, and, and I think I know the answer already. Why would they be willing to sell you one for a buck? Um, At the end of 240 days, you obviously have to pay for it. But or give it back to them. Yes. Or give it back yeah. to them. And they want $10,000 for the truck. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, why is because what I said because we have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. We're good. We're good customers. And they're them. hoping you buy another fire engine. And they are. And they frankly, there is nobody is looking at that truck. That truck is just sitting on their lot. Yeah. Actually, when I was there, he tried to sell me a demo that is been sitting on his, a demo ambulance that's been sitting on his lot for three years. It's brand new, except it's three years old. And he tried to sell me that. So there, that particular that smaller ambulance isn't um, high in high demand now for us it's the only thing we can do because our station is so small our station slopes back mm -hmm. so it's the only thing we can do is a small animal like that jen are there any expenses associated with this new truck that you would not have incurred with the old one it almost sounds like the old one was costing you a lot of money it was uh, that was yeah because i i said that i um i paid um fifteen hundred dollars to get the um it, it repaired in july when the the um, cab mount fell off so i it was it was becoming um, more expensive to run than not. Um, you know, um, the chief in West Boylston said it's been taken care of. Um, they're going to put um, signs on it to cover up the West Boylston to say Topsfield on it. Um, and then, uh, as it turns out, this is exactly the time when our state licensure is due for our ambulances. So I had already mailed in, trying to be ahead of time, mailed in the. Um, application for both ambulances to be renewed in their license. So I spoke to the Department of Public Health and they're willing to um, hold that fee off and not not apply it to the ambulance we have now, but to whatever we bring in. So um, that wouldn't be an additional cost. And there'll be, um, we'll have to move things over, but we're gonna do that in-house. So there may be, um, and I'm, I'm not sure what it's inspection, I'll probably have to get it re-inspected because when we register it to the town, it would change that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm sure there'll be some, um, Registry fees and things like that. But so, Jen, is your your thought that um, if you have this one dollar ambulance, um, assuming that we go forth and approve the capital expenditure necessary to buy a new ambulance, you buy the new ambulance, basically trade in this one dollar, get the one dollar ambulance back, and you then would have the current A one would become your sort of number two. No, A1 will stay A1. It will stay A1, but it will be the older of the two in terms of the if, if we bought a brand new one. That's true. If you bought a brand new one, if you choose to buy a used, as you indicated, then maybe. I, I personally have had um, some initial discussions with Kelly and with my FinCom rep that I believe that it is not responsible to buy a, a brand new truck for that role. Yeah. Um, but that's just in the beginning stages. Yeah, really, um, it's still a way to go. And it, the fact of the matter is, it, it may come down to something that, we, because we're unique, because the station is so small, that puts us under different constraints for trucks. So. The, the issue of costing too much to maintain and keep on the road becomes a secondary issue, because the issue is downtime. 
if, if it's out of service and you need the thing, right. that's the problem. Uh, the real problem, in my opinion. Right, and, well, and of course, in this time frame, we're relying on mutual aid partners. So, yeah. you know, whether that be the town of Middleton, the town of um, Wenham, or Northeast Regional, if they have it, that's what we've been we're relying on. Um, so, but I just want to update you that that's kind of where we're at. Mm -hmm. Would there be any change in the insurance amount required to insure this truck versus the one that we currently have? Like, I don't believe so. Probably not substantial. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't think it's years to Well, it's newer. It's newer than ours now, so Which is why yeah. your insurance policy is going to cost a little bit more, but probably not a major amount. Of money. And it will come, obviously, the other one will come right off at the same right. time, or it can come off now because it's not being driven, so either, mm -hmm. either way. Yeah. Um, but that's where we're at with that. And, um, but right now, it's we, not safe to drive. It is not. I mean, I mean, subject matter experts have told me not to drive it. So, the state certainly wouldn't have been able to certify it um, when they come to do their annual inspections. Do you have any idea on the availability of a used fire truck when you, I mean, an ambulance when you get ready to buy one? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's an air truck. I, I notice there's no comment. That's okay. Just well, I mean, I have no front. idea, but I'm, 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 I mean, there's people. But there's going to be some available, you're saying? Yes, and there, and there are known entities that we know exactly their maintenance. Like, that to me is the, the um, <laughs> and we've been, have a great partner as well with New Meadows Auto in mm -hmm. town, and actually Country Motors, too, are great, but they will look at, our, you know, the trucks before and vet them out, too, so. Okay. Um, and that whole process is the regular budget process that you're going through. That's right. That. Yeah. That's right, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're preparing the capital plan. Um, this originally it was in there for two hundred fifty thousand for purchase of a new one. So since then we're waiting for revised quotes and numbers, and so I'm working with the chief on getting the right number based on a used vehicle. I'd like to make a statement about the fact that this is not an expansion no, of the so ambulance right. service for the town of Topsy. Right. It's right. a period. It's a replacement of a condemned vehicle. That's right. Right. That sounds better. Yeah, but there still represents a question on the part of the town as to whether you want to replace that or not. There's costs associated with it. I understand what the chief said. It's valuable for backup, but that's also why you have, as you point out, the supporting of the towns and, or Northeast Ambulance. For example, I'm sure when you sent A1 out to get inspected for several hours, you told Northeast Ambulance, by the way, we don't have A1 available to us. The other one is condemned. Uh, be more available to us, whatever. That's part of the process. You can't have all the fire trucks that you'll ever need for a big fire in Topsfield. You get help from outside. The same thing here. We don't necessarily have to have two ambulances. It'd be nice to have three ambulances. Then if one goes to get inspected, you still have two to back up each other, whatever. So we can certainly get more and more and more. But there's nothing that says we need to have two ambulances in our firehouse to provide service and good service to the people of Topsfield. It the is only people that say that are the professionals that run the friggin' fire department. They're the people that say we need to have two ambulances. And you, are you, you using the term the town doesn't agree with that? Uh, that's a pretty broad statement. And I don't have anything that tells me that the town doesn't agree with that. Well, the town did vote a decade ago, no way on two ambulances. So the, the town did have some input to it. But that, that, was, that's, that was all predicated on the fact that the premise at that time that everybody said we're going to go to a full-time ambulance service. And that was, a, that was not um, okay. part that, of it. I, I, I just offered the thought. Can I just say It, it is just, not a requirement. There's no absolute requirement to have a second ambulance in the town of Topsfield, perhaps for a short period of time, maybe forever, but even for a short period of time. As you point out, you sometimes send them away, whatever else. Can I but, say but, that's, but, that's a, but that's an aside. It's Let's, no different like to talk than about deciding mechanics. how many trucks you need to plow snow in a way. It's exactly the same argument. Well, the I think that's a question decide. that could be yep. discussed during do you do about, the 2020 budget. One person at a time, all right? One person. Jen, that that could be a question that gets addressed during the 2020 budget, because this isn't changing it, it anything that was agreed to last year. This it, is it maintaining the status quo it that was agreed to be. in the last budget. So it, it would it be a question be. going forward in the 2020 budget. It should be. What do you do though when you need fire uh, plows? Do we have enough plows in the town of Topsfield to plow the town? I have a spare one that sits up there right now and it's ready to go to work. If we need one, we have it. 
but you know as well as I do better than I do that we go out to contract for a lot of our plowing. Well, of course. Yes, the same sort of thing with the ambulance. Okay, let's go out and contract some more then because we never have enough. Yeah. Let's, okay, I, I think it's worth uh, it to hold back on this. Yeah, Can we talk about the mechanics of it for a moment? Um, I feel very uncomfortable with this agreement as the wording goes here. It's talking about buying something for a dollar. Once you buy something, you own it. That's a contract. It then goes on to say you have to give it back. Well, that's not an ownership. Perhaps this is something that would be a lease or a option to purchase after the dollar, then you have an option to purchase at a later time. But it, it is certainly not what this says, which is to buy it for a dollar. Once you buy it, you own it. That's a, that's a basic contract concept. So I think that this is, as written, is flawed. Again, if it said lease, I would, I would feel much better. The second point relative wait, to wait, this wait, is... What did you just say? If this said lease, no, no, what did you I would say feel much better. Written as what? I don't want to mishear you. What? Go, say again. I'm asking you what you just said. What I you said a sentence. If this is as written, it is. And I, I want to know what you said at the end of the sentence. Because I don't want to mishear you. This is wrong as written. It's wrong. You said it was wrong. Right. I said something else. This does talk about an end sale. It talks about an end sale. And, and so and there's several way, if, things you can do. You can we don't have a lease to purchase. Or you could have a sort of thing that says, um, this they, is an they option to buy, a dollar for an option to buy at that, within that period of time, at that price, whatever. But, but to say that you buy it for a dollar and then you give it back, give it back, um, I mean, maybe somebody would write I, some I understood through a procurement I don't know. there had to be a sale. Te technically, this is the problem. No. No. Well, it's been reviewed by town council very thoroughly. We went back and forth about three times to make sure, because I did have some of the same... Yes, I understood from Debbie that KP looked at it, but we're the ones who are responsible. But, but we have to be it. responsible to register it. It's our ambulance. This company does not own ambulances and lease them out. This company sells ambulances. If we don't own it, then my understanding is that we, it then becomes the responsibility of the person leasing it to us, and that's not what they're willing to do. So essentially, the sale is a favor for 240 days, and if we decide to keep it, it's 990. What I would guess it would be, buyers have the right to cancel this agreement without penalty or obligation return. If you cancel it, you pay the dollar back, right? You pay the dollar back, uh, or they I, pay. I don't think I don't think there's a dollar back. Huh? That's well, a, it that's just says new. right here, return without financial obligation. Okay, so this isn't the dollar back, but meaning you don't have to go forward with it right now. Yeah, I, I just can't understand how you can purchase it for a dollar but then have to give it back. It's well, this kind of thing is done in other it's, situations. It's, well, know. okay, uh, I, I think that we should work harder to find a way to make this what I would consider appropriately legal. Even though it's gone to Before, county council? Yeah, even though it's gone to KP law, yes. What would you suggest, yes. Dick, as a next step to make well, it even to, more to work out whatever this issue is with the owner of it that doesn't want to do something relative to the state. I mean, I can understand it. It's not their business or whatever. But try to work something out that would actually work. I'd like to move that we approve an agreement between Greenwood Emergency Vehicle LLC and the Town of Topsfield for the acquisition of a used ambulance in the amount of one dollar as outlined in the agreement presented in our materials. Thank you. Okay, now this is essentially a $10,000 purchase. I can do the mathematics. 9999 plus one is 10,000. So any $10,000 purchase we should be thinking about going out to bid, thinking about we should be going out to bid, I believe. And th that hasn't happened. But we're not buying it for the $10,000. What's that? We haven't made the decision to purchase it for $10,000. We've made the decision to purchase it's, it for $1. It, but if you and don't return it. And we make return that decision it, in 239 days. If you don't return it, so there's this it's encumbrance. It's conditional. If buyer it, agrees to pay the company $9,000, should buyer elect to keep the vehicle beyond 240 So when do we go out to bid if we decide to get it we don't need for $9,999? It's, it's, it's not subject to bidding. 
If it it's were a $10,000 $10, acquisition. It would be subject to three quotes. However, it is ten thousand. It's either a dollar or it's nine 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 thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. The nine 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 also comes it's in another year. I don't know if that makes any. And no, through the budget it doesn't. Process. It's, it's the town council has approved it. That's written. Okay. I, I mean, I, the worst I, case, I, I be nine hundred ninety-nine is eight that. dollars. If you know, that's in your letter. I think that's kind Jen, of Jen. You indicated the words "agree upon a price," but the the agreement here has a price in it. What did you mean by "agree upon a price"? I thought if there's anything in agreement, it's here already. It it could be at the um at that point um. I was kind of hoping because I'm thinking of spending less than nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. So um, I would not. I would negotiate that price with them at that point if we were going to buy that ambulance. Depends on how it, what it is, but a different ambulance. That um, yeah. No, no yeah, either, either, either You negotiate a different price at the two hundred and forty-day mark if you decided you wanted to keep it. I, I that's what I would do. It's another year older. Yeah, negotiate a dollar discount. You won't have to go out to bid. There, there you go. That's do, it. Do, yeah, do, 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 would you consider right. just on okay, that yeah. point changing this from 9999 to 9998? It'll just cover it without a question. Is there a question now? Yeah. Um, Do you think the dollar now, makes a difference? There is no there is no actual appropriation for this. So that's not a problem. Within our system, you go to the finance committee, unexpected expense, and you get the dollar from because we, we really live by the laws. There is no appropriation for this. So I believe in order to make this happen, it needs a FinCom reserve fund transfer of a dollar. It's simple, dumb, but it does require that in our laws. Is that the next step after we approve it from no. a process no. perspective? No. We don't have a, an appropriate dollar in the fire department budget. I'm sure, sure we do. I'm sure we do. You just throw in all the stuff here. You don't yeah. have to go up and yeah, do that. Much. It's if you need the money. You need a reserve fund transfer if there's a dollar that's applicable in the fight of federal budget. We have a motion and a second. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I'm trying to let people talk, but I don't <laughs> like them all yelling over each other. And I know it's a people work session. We have a motion in the second. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I oppose based on my comments. Can I just say one thing? Yep. I'm sorry, to go back to the 2004 vote of town meeting, the town was not asked if they wanted a 24 7 ambulance, fire department, or anything like that. They're asked to buy two brand new ambulances and four full time people on the recommendation of two different committees that studied the fire department and the ambulance service delivery. So I just, I just feel like that needs to be, that is the truth of what happened. They weren't asked about staffing the 24-7 committee. They weren't any of that stuff. It was the items on the table were two brand new ambulances and four people. That's what was on the table. As recommended by two. There needs, there needs to be a correction to that, seriously. It's been mischaracterized for I know, I just wanted to like I had to say that, I know. There were two questions. One was ambulances, and another one was for staffing. The ambulances went down decisively, more so than even the four personnel additions. So just the two separate ones. But we're mid-budget year. There's nothing happening here except for maintaining the status quo, right. addressing public safety, addressing safety of anyone that would be asked to drive the vehicle. It is absolutely in the appropriate budgetary process for the upcoming fiscal year where the voters, the residents, whatever we're calling them today, will be that entire process there. And the town meeting people to vote thumbs up. For the purchase of thumbs down, don't no suggest that we have the funds for the 9999 or whatever that is. That's all in the regular, usual, customary time process. My only point on the 9999 was to get under the 10,000 without question. If you made it 9998, then it, it takes that any question of that away. Certainly, but that's certainly the chief in Kelly Avenue that I work with KPR and our purchasing department to make sure we do things properly if any 
adjust when it's necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Yep, thank, thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Jim. Signed by law and regulation. Oh, still here, Glenn? I am. Are you, are you awake? Are you awake? So, Kelly, maybe you can help us where we left this off. Sure. Um, we actually, Glenn is here today to answer any questions you might have. Um, effectively, what we've done is try to pull together some information so we can continue our momentum with our um, background on the signed bylaw. Um, I've added some extra documents for the board's consideration. Um, really just an expansion of the some of the items we talked about the last time. I've included um, the bylaw itself, the actual changes that were recently made. We've included the regulations that are used to um, by the Board of Selectmen that are voted to um, basically allow the bylaw to be in existence and to deal with any deviations. There's a copy of the special <coughs> permit that people will need to file if they have something that's out of conformance. Uh, we also have drafted a letter which basically is suggested that we would um, use that letter as an informational piece to go with um, a lot of the information that we can mail out to a whole mailing list of businesses in the town. Um, basically allowing us to educate and inform rather than to be coming down with the enforcement hammer. We want to spread the word, let people know that the bylaw has been updated. We also want to let them know uh, what the information is and uh, who to contact if they have a question or a complaint. So we're really just trying to follow the board's um, lead on this and trying to get better understanding uh, so that we can get our ducks in a row before we sort of go to phase two. Um, the, the letter that is in here represents a letter that has been drafted uh, for the board's consideration, and I'm looking for that right now, the signage letter. Okay. There's a letter it's dated for today, but um, I'm, I'm happy to accept any changes or revisions to this. But effectively, it, uh, we would send out a packet that would allow um, the new bylaw, inform people of the new bylaw and the changes. We include the rules and regs for signs, the special permit application, and the zoning complaint form. One other piece that we're suggesting is that we would look at the website to make sure that once we update all this information, we can have it in one place on the website, mm -hmm. make it very uh, user-friendly for people to go on the website to do a search for the information, and then to know where to follow up. Did you put anything in the letter about that? I haven't seen the letter, Kelly, so have you put, did you put oh. anything in the letter? Yeah, no. There's two letters in our packet. Is there, there is. And they're different. Oh, oh you know what? One's an older letter. Because the Glenn older. came to me. It's the, one, the one dated 2017. the... 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> so that was that goes back because, of this course, we've been discussing this for a little bit. I put that in there as a backup. Glenn had come to me um, last year and it said, you know, when people were talking about we were getting a number of different complaints about the sign by law. So this is not going to go out. The letter, the last one on your list would be going out. Right. Just making sure that the January yeah. 3rd, 2017 letter is not the version no, going out. Correct. Okay. That I just want to get just, rid of that because yeah. that's just there for yeah. reference. We don't yeah, so we're really need that. December 13th. December 13th, the last one on the that's list. It. It's the it's it, in the board docs. It's illegal signage complaint. Is that it? No. Letter. Yes. Letter to tell letter. No, the this one right here. The is, illegal one is the one that's not going out. I get you. So the last one on the Thank list. You. Thank you. I want to phrase that differently. Just, just because I noticed it, you need to know where in the first sentence you for choosing to own or operate. Oh, yes. So an and? Yeah. But it could be someone who would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To own and Kelly. operate. Okay. Kelly. Yeah. In the draft, you have the, uh, it says contact and special services and. Oh, is your name Glenn? Uh, your email is incorrect there. So, oh no, I did change it. No, that's right. It's the phone number that's wrong. Okay. They'll be calling your office, right? Oh no. Who's 1510? <laughs> I don't know who 1510 is. What should it be, Glenn? Um, 1522. 15? I don't know. I never call it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, those are simple enough to update. And Kelly, this is more probably because I knew and I don't have the background on it, yeah. but I was trying to align and, and look at, of the four um, documents that were going out with this letter, <coughs> which of these that we had in our packet mm -hmm. here are the ones uh, okay. being attached, because I don't know the difference between actually Article 8 
and Article 5, they have different fine levels. Yes. Yeah. And so I didn't know which of these was the one that was going out. Okay. We were now we can we can take we can cater this to whatever you think is most helpful. Um, I was just being very comprehensive in listing all of the pieces, but we, we were suggesting is the administration and enforcement bylaw. Basically, that's the way we're able to, and the sign um, rules and regulations and the actual bylaw. So, the and first thing those, would be the bylaw as updated. In which of the attachments is that bylaw? Oh, okay. The sign bylaws and regulations, the one at the very top? Uh, yes. I just want to be sure that we're covering yeah. them and yeah. we see what we that's have. That's the key article piece. 8. And what I would suggest on this yeah. that you, you um, put. Whatever the name that you use in the is consistent. The, that you put that at the top as a header. So when they look at these bullet items, they know which one of these is. Yeah. Yeah. Each of the four. Yeah. Oh, this that one out. I was. I yeah. just. The, yeah. So get that well, yeah. this is the one. Am I looking at the right one? That's the first one. The admin. No. No. On this these, one. Yeah. Things, so for each one at the top, put whatever the name is that is the in the letter. One. So if it says administrative and enforcement bylaw, then they should say administrative and enforcement oh. bylaw. Okay. And yeah. then so that we'll people can identify which, which of those three, which is yeah. which. So okay. Which so, okay. The first one, the, the key document here, is this one. Article Sign eight. regulations, Article Eight. Yeah. That's the whole point of us sending out this mailings to let people know we have a bylaw, what it says, and it incorporates the new changes. Yeah, can I make this more suggestion? Sure. Like, this is the most important one. Put it first. Yes. You know, if there's a provision that you particularly want them to look at, right, 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 C, your S E B, article eight. Okay. So, is there another document in addition to this one, yes. the administration enforcement, that talks about? Um, what the consequence is. is there's no fine list in this one. one. And that's that is Article bullet. 5. Now, I, can't, I think that this one is probably overkill. The reason I think that is because the only reason this is here is for everyone's education. I put it on the list to be thorough. However, all of this is, is for your information, just tells all of you if somebody doesn't follow the bylaw and there are penalties and enforcement actions, Article 5 would apply. That's what Glenn has to use in order to enforce the signed bylaw. And at the last meeting, there was a question about how do you enforce it, what are the rules, what are the fines. So we need to put that in there because it's got special permits, um, how to apply and so on. That should go out with this letter so um, that people kind of understand the full thing. Oh, if I'm in in violation. Not, yeah, if I'm in violation, whatever, I, I think this what deserves happens? to go in. This needs to be in there and labeled as. And whatever, consistent names. So if, if this yes, is signed we'll rules sure and regulations, it's yep. up at the top yep. too. It could be, um, right, it could be uh, administration enforcement. But yeah, I think you've got to get, one is going to be signed rules and regulations, that included in Article 8. Mm -hmm. Administration enforcement bylaw, that's Article 5. Special yeah. permit application, there's the yeah. how. Yeah. In Article so we're, Five, we're drilling, we're drilling but down. The application form itself is going to be yeah. included. Probably. Yeah. Okay. And the zoning complaint form. Why are we no, putting that? Why would that be exactly? We don't. Uh, Does we don't have to put it in. No, no. Yeah, no, not necessarily. Well. Yeah. The business owner. They won't find it themselves. No, but I mean, if. I wouldn't bother with them. I don't think we need to do it. We come and look and see. We don't have to. Unless you put in the more like these that don't. Yeah, I just put in those three things, Article okay. 8, Article 5, and the um, application for non for the, sign. Okay, perfect. And maybe out of this administration and enforcement, there are uh, multiple dollar levels. There's criminal, there's non-criminal. I don't know if the average business owner would know where they fall if they're in a violation. So that's, that's why I thought that I, I was... I, that's why I didn't know if this was appropriate because I think it's going to raise a lot of questions, maybe make people more confused, as opposed to just looking at the bylaw in the special permit request and then calling us for more information. I, so, I, you know, I, I, I'm indifferent, really. I just want this to be effective, but I think if we give, if we bury people in paper, they're not going to look at any of it. Yeah, and if, I was going to say, if anything, I do administration, administration, enforcement, and special permit application. So that's clear why it's in there. 
Right, right, so we're still talking five. about three three documents: the bylaw, the um, the one that says administration enforcement, but in also includes permit. the procedures for applying for a special permit. But that would be another document, which is no, that's number five. That's Article Five. It's right in there in Article oh, okay. Five, okay. which so is why Article Five documents. needs to be included. But if we put it in the title, it's be it's because we're not just sitting and here's how we're going to hit you. It's like. Also, here's how right. you apply okay. for an exemption. Yeah. And then we put the form for the exemption in there. The thing you can do is you can yellow highlight the, the, the yeah. yeah, because I, I didn't know the difference good. between them, whether it's well, $300 or if you're in the category of 25 50 100 whether you're criminal or non-criminal. Mm -hmm. Well, God willing, that, God willing, nobody will be in, in a state of non-conformance after they get this, when you, <laughs> this when, mailing. When you, when you get the order and the rule, <coughs> yes. just take this, just throw them down on your yeah. desk and, and, in, and just highlight a block here or a line here. Kind of I'll figure out a way, yeah, 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 to highlight them. The yeah. other thing is that um, I agree that I think if we put in too much explanation about whether it's criminal, non-criminal, and so on and so forth, um, it looks a little bit more like we're gearing for a fight rather than asking for compliance. Right. Right. Um, that stuff will all come up if we run into a significant problem. But this would probably go after you've had one or two or even three conversations with somebody. And I think being a little more business friendly at the outset is important. This has to be part of Article 5. We're putting Article 5 in there because we talked about special mm -hmm. permits. I, I think you also got to be careful about the fact that if you give these people a packet of paper, that's going to be it. not going to get read. So, you, so gotta, you gotta be cognizant of talking right. retail business, small retail yeah. business owners. They're busy, yeah. their concern is who's on the floor, yeah. is anybody shoplifting, who else is coming. So one of the things you could do is you could put it special permits application procedure and then parentheses section five point oh four. You put the whole of Article Five out, but you just highlighted to them what they need to look at. In other words, it's buried in that one article, but we're giving you the whole article. If you happen to be interested in what are the violations? Yeah, I think we got to we got a couple, couple of things. All right, one is I remember at the last um, at, at the last work session for the science, we talked about what the fine structure was because we found out that when we had the issue with the kennel, that um, our the, the way the fines were worded in our bylaw was not the way they should be. And we had to go with a different procedure. Okay, so I don't know. The, the different procedure was the um, the, the twenty five, fifty, and a hundred, and um, versus the three hundred that the bylaw states. The other thing is, if you put too much information in this, something I think you have to be careful of is that people aren't going to know whether they need a special permit for the sign or not. All right. And that's something that they should be coming to me to make the determination because I have to deny, you know, I, I look at it and then tell them that they need a building permit. I deny the building permit and that's what gets them to the selectmen as a special permit granting authority. So I, I think that um, um, to, give, to give them that form and that information, I think something can be mentioned about a non-conforming sign may require a uh, special permit from the Board of Selectmen call, call the 887-1522 and, you know, and if you're we, can help, we can help you determine whether, what, what's appropriate. I really like All right. that. And then because that's, that's going to get them, you know, that's going to get them having a conversation with my office to determine whether they're, they're it's friendly compliance. It is friendlier, and the and the sign by law allows for some really <laughs> large signs, um, especially down in the in the shopping center and stuff, um, because of the setbacks and the uh, and that type of thing. So, um, what we don't want is to have everybody filling out a uh, an application for a special permit for a sign, and and running to Donna with it, um, mm -hmm. when when it's not necessary, and and that. That that would just aggravate people, so which we don't want to. Doesn't it go to Diane? No. It, well, no. She gets the initial application, mm -hmm. and then it gets reviewed by me, and I make the determination whether mm -hmm. it's whether it's non-conforming or not. I see. Okay. I deny it. Um, then it goes. And, and then I we give it whether I give it back to them or, or Diane gives it back to them. Um, it goes from there to uh, to Donna to set up the appointment with the. 
I say, okay, I didn't realize Donna was sitting there. I thought Diane did that in your no. office. Glenn, do you feel like we have a number of uh, businesses that have issues right now? The biggest the biggest issue that we have are the little the little signs that everybody put everywhere. You know, the, 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 the little. Uh, the Does this line. address yeah. that? Are they businesses or are they other people putting these little signs? No, they're, they're businesses, and they're all and they're all local businesses. You know, I mean, they're not. Uh, we don't have a lot of um, uh, you know people putting on remote signs and that type of thing. That's that becomes an issue at certain times of year. For landscaping companies, painting companies, um, schools, schools. We had a time uh, during the top field fair um, last year that um, you know there was some um, some you know we're we're hiring welding signs all up and down Route One. We get those taken care of. Um, if those little yeah. signs are the ones that are the problem, should we be directing in some way to let them know? That's where the issue is, so that everyone's not panicking about there are other their issues. regular signs. Yeah, there well, are other issues. I think there's, I think there's some other it's issues too, issues. but um, um, I, I think we need to get their attention. I think we, we need to do something to make them pay attention to what they're doing. So, you know, putting out these little signs and, um, you know, you have a place that has three or four of those little signs out, that just aggravates people. You know, the, the, um, it would be really nice if um, uh, Peter Flump put in a sign down at the at the shopping center, you know, out by the entrance that lists all the people that, that are in the shopping center. Mm -hmm. He talked about doing that years ago on the side entrance, um, but there were, I guess there were some issues with, you know, with that, and I'm not totally sure. I can't remember exactly what they were. But, with with um, us or with him? With him. With him, right. With him. It was his decision. It was, yeah, because, because it was we allow the side businesses and stuff. The multiple signs. Oh, he can put a huge sign out there. He doesn't um, want to spend the money, even though yeah. that one's rotting away at the bottom, as I'm sure you've noticed. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's, you know, and he's, I think he's going to do something with that because he's got some plans. He has some plans for the place down there. And, um, you know, he's, he's working on, and, you oh, know, good. so, um, you know, hopefully it's, that's part of it. You know. Um, the, the letter that was in our packet from 2017, it looks like it was kind of similar to this one. Was that effective when it went out? It, it, did it, get it didn't go out. It didn't go out. It, it, didn't go out. Never I don't did think it got out. sent out. No. It was a work, it get, yeah. it oh, it was a work in progress. Yeah. Okay. So can we go back on the documents? Uh, John, you mentioned yeah. this idea of the special permit uh, approach in that in Chapter 5. The two documents I think are the most important are Chapter 13, XIII, Roman numeral 13, and the, the selectmen's rules and regulations, because it's in the selectmen's rules and regulations that the special permit stuff is listed. And those are the two key ones. Those are the ones that I believe we should most include. And don't include, again, this chapter five, which includes the penalties and all kinds of other things. The, the, the procedures, the rules and regulations that we have written back 2009, last, last updated, are the ones that give the guidelines for what you need to do if you have a non-conforming sign, whatever else. So again, my idea is that those are the two key ones, and as Mark said, if you have too much, they won't read it, and if those are the key ones and we can agree on that, then those are the ones that we should put in there. On the website, we can have links to all of these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm confused because Article 5 has permit granting authority and special permit granting authority and then you go down a little bit further to all public hearing and all the stuff that has to be and it says special permit granting authority on the B and then you get down to 504 special permits application procedure um, it seems to me that it's here I didn't realize there's another one in article 13 no it's not in 13 you got your board docs there I do I'm looking uh, at it right now uh, just pick up the document itself. Yeah, so it's. Uh, this one, administration enforcement? This that one? one right there, yeah. So those are the ones that are the, 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 the rules and regulations that the selectmen have set aside for the sign. Based upon application, uh, sign regulations, but like this probably all needs to go. So this, uh, this is zoning by the sign regulations, zoning by law. The reason I'm kind of interested here is it says special permits will be granted on Article 5 will be granted by the planning board. Right, but this is not a planning board one. This is special permits that, based on bylaw, based on 13, the special 
permit granting authority to assign, in, in accordance with Chapter 13, is the law of the selectmen, and that why it says this, that's the procedures for the selectmen. I select understand. So what I'm surprised about is, I'm going to find this here, um, Article 5, What we're talking. I'd like to volunteer. I'd like to work with Kelly on this letter and uh, try to get uh, take the comments that uh, you have about the non-conforming sites. And maybe come down and talk with you more by uh, trying to get the right kind of wording in on it. But I'm willing to do that for the next meeting. I, I, I just want to find this. I, I don't have any problem with that. I just want to find this one thing just so we can point it out. This thing here says. Um, Special granting authority. The permit, the Topsfield planning uh, planning board shall be the special permit granting authority pursuant to the zoning act. In this capacity, the planning board shall be responsible for hearing and deciding upon an application for special permits for the following. So, these talk about general permits. The question is, are we doing sign permits differently? Yes. No, no question yes. about it. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's what 13 does. That's right. Okay, so as long as the, okay, so in a sense, Article that, Five is a much more encompassing kind of thing. Yeah, but maybe we don't need Article Five because I was leaning on Article Five is how we do the special permits, but the yes. special permits no. are signed. I'm, I'm going to say there's a consensus among us that we should finally reach yeah, the that's good. And I'm okay. only send out the ones that are really needed. And, 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 and thank you. And that's great. great. And certainly in the in the letter that goes out, um, and if you, you know, maybe maybe one specific section on the website for a while anyway that deals with the signs and just point people in that direction in that letter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. if they have if they have any questions and give you know, you give our phone link. number, the pocket mm -hmm. phone number. Maybe I can put the link right within the letter. I like the letter. Yeah. That's a great yeah. Idea. That's then they can they can do <clears throat> then let them let them do a little bit of research or or can call if they are not comfortable with the computer stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? and but, there's uh, a specific provision or paragraph within one of the docs that you want to bring into. You just do the word, word just a yellow color. It's yeah. great. And, um, and to put something in there that has like the special permit granting authority as it's listed as it's listed here and, and what you just read is just going to confuse people because they have to I hear you. I hear you. I'm, I'm uh, fine in terms of Reviewing this and tuning up a little bit. I think we're moving in exactly the right direction. One yeah, other small, I, small I thing that I, I apologize for missing on the way down the letter. Weed, you want to say we would, you know what? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, relative to this, this is a first step. So we're sending this out to make businesses aware some rules have changed. They have to be in conformance. If they have questions, call us. Is there a step two in our process here? So for those people who have not contacted us and we know that there are issues, you know, our goal was to ensure that people understood what the, the bylaws were, make changes where we saw fit, and make sure that they're enforced. So as a group working towards that goal, do we have a step two, or has there been any discussion that if this letter does not cause any behavioral changes and we still see the signs, what do we do? So January 2017 letter, with a little bit of adjustment, will go to that particular business. <laughs> That's my take on it. Well, yeah, step two, in my opinion, <laughs> is you, you send a letter to those folks that have a sign that, that doesn't meet the bylaw, mm -hmm. and if they haven't responded to the letter that we sent you a month ago or right, two exactly. months ago exactly. or something. Right. And so it doesn't require a zoning complaint form. We are going to take that on ourselves to know which businesses we're going to be sending these to. We don't need to follow that. Right, we're, we're, we're going to have to monitor it for a little while. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, um, it, it can it can be a huge cumbersome job to, to just to monitor the signs. Oh no question. You know what I mean? Because there's there's so many of them and, and which ones are non conforming and which ones aren't. Because the ones you know, as, as we talked about in the last meeting, some of the ones that are non conforming now, um, weren't non conforming necessarily when they were put up. And maybe and, grandfathered. And they may and they may be grandfathered. And so there's, there's, there's issues. It's not it's not cut and dry like everybody mm -hmm. says it is. Like everybody seems to think it is that mm -hmm. you know it doesn't comply with today's bylaw. So that means it, it it's legal. Is, is, well, there yeah, are probably it, categories illegal. that we could break it into. There are things that are obviously they never have been legal. They're not right. legal I, now. I They're think, the first ones. To, I, I think to the have biggest I think the biggest thing with um, with 
at least the appearance of compliance with the signed bylaw is going to be getting rid of all of these little tiny stick in the ground, stuck in the ground, the two yeah. sticks, are the curve the sign, and the day break. Yeah, <laughs> which is there are also flags and other things. That oh, I think well, stick up in this. I agree with you. I think the shell that. station down there makes yeah. it crazy. A major <laughs> violator is the yeah. is the shell station. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. exactly. But your key concern like are the signs with the wire posts that go in that come up. Those are the ones that I think a lot of people are concerned about. They kind of so. grow up out of free. It's, it's, all, it's one kind only, but there's but, lots of them. That's right. why they seem to be the bigger right. issue and, right and, now. And that's what this was, This is that's pretty much what this was designed to target. And I think some of the sandwich board signs too. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I honestly, I have to reread the, the, um, the, the sign bylaw with 